DNA is the, the map that contains all the information about how a cell is built and how an organism is built at the end of the day. Myeloma, like any cancer, is a disease in which mutations occur in the DNA that then lead to the cancer cell multiplying itself in an uncontrolled fashion. There's a bit of variability between all of us that makes us have different hair color, different eye color. And some of that variability also impacts very slightly the risk of developing myeloma. So the general risk of developing myeloma is 5 in 100,000, and direct relatives of patients with myeloma have a slightly increased risk. However, it is still as low as only being 10 in 100,000. So the impact, although being relatively twofold, is in absolute terms still very low. Studying the genetics of myeloma um, can make us understand what ultimately drives the disease um, and how we could best treat it. Ultimately, we want to use the study of genetics to tailor therapy to give the patient really the treatment that their disease is most likely to respond to and to stay in a long-term remission with. In myeloma, what happens is often that big, large chunks of the genetic information are changed. So uh, large parts of the chromosomes, for example, are glued together to other parts that they should normally not be next to. It's, it's as if we take a book chapter and move it from one section of a book to a completely different section of a book. There can be whole regions of the chromosome lost, the whole chapter just gone, or it can be duplicated that we have many copies of the same region that drive the disease. So we know that some changes that affect larger parts of the genome where really large bits of the chromosomes are lost or glued to different parts of the chromosome are associated with an adverse prognosis. We know, for example, that deletions of chromosome 17P or a translocation between chromosomes 4 and 14 um, can lead to shorter remission times and the disease coming back quicker. We have also learned through recent studies that these patients can particularly benefit from combination treatments, so using two or three different drugs rather than one drug, but also using these drugs for a prolonged time frame, can revert the adverse prognosis and improve the outcomes. So we're using the information that we learn through genetic tests to actually already design new therapies and new trials for these subtypes of patients that are currently not optimally treated with the available treatments. There are some cells within the myeloma that carry a certain mutations and other cells that carry another mutation. We know that they all have a common ancestor, so something happened very early on with one cell, but after that they developed into different branches. Now, when we treat the disease with a drug, we often get rid of a lot of the cells, but in many instances there are some cells that are surviving. And it can be that that mutation that is specific to that cell is what's driving the survival of this subclone, as we call it. So that can then lead that this, to that, this subclone relapsing and giving rise to a larger population again, which is then becoming visible as well in terms of a rising paraprotein or a larger number of cells on a bone marrow biopsy. The cell then will need another type of treatment because it was refractory to the treatment we gave before to actually bring it down again. Stratified medicine is at the very heart of what we also call personalized medicine. It is an approach in which we use information that we can gain about the myeloma, mostly genetic information, but it can also be other information such as frailty, to actually assign a specific treatment to a specific subgroup of patients.